Right, so it's time not to get scared because in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at three red horror stories. Now, these are true scary red horror stories and I don't know how I'm going to be responding to these because the first one's about someone who got kidnapped, almost got kidnapped, or maybe got kidnapped on college campus. The second one is about a Japanese ghost. And the third one is about a camping incident where something paranormal happened out there. So all three of these are definitely, definitely true paranormal and maybe even controversial so let's go ahead and check out the first one i think i almost got kidnapped but right, let's read this one out this happened during my freshman year of college i was taking a theater appreciation class and we had to attend some of the plays the theater department put on normally i went with my friends but for this one i had to go alone since they were at another event the play started at 6 30 so i set out on the short 10 minute walk to the theater as one does it takes 10 minutes to reach around campus when i arrived i saw a man standing by the entrance out of habit i smiled to him you know animals i tend to do that with strangers he smiled back but there was something about him that made me feel uneasy he got in line right behind me and while we waited i overheard him muttering to himself about his car and where it was parked i really wasn't paying much attention until i heard him say where are you sitting? I thought he was talking to someone else, so I didn't respond. Once my ticket was scanned, I went in and found my seat. But then, to my surprise, the same man sat down right next to me. I heard him mumble, I can't believe it, right next to me. His tone sent a chill through me, but I tried to ignore it. He was probably in his early 30s, and soon enough, he turned to me and started asking questions. Too many questions. Do you come to these plays often? He asked. I told him no. He quickly launched into how he was irregular and loved them, even mentioning that his girlfriend was in the play at night. Okay, pause. Alright, so this could just be a guy being a bit too friendly, because I've had people, you know, come up to me in college and just having a nice friendly conversation. That's how it is in college. So I don't know. I mean, so far it seems like a guy who just wants to talk to somebody. So far, okay, so far. Maybe she didn't communicate enough that she didn't want to talk to him or maybe she could have just said no. Maybe she was just being nice. I don't know. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and check this out, okay? I was still creeped out, but I felt a twinge of guilt by judging him so quickly. There you go. Maybe he was just being friendly, like I said. But then something strange happened. Everything I said, he had the same interests, the same experiences. It was unsettling. When he asked what kind of music I liked, I decided to mention Regina Spector, a less known artist thinking he wouldn't know her. His response, oh I love Regina Spector, she's amazing. I listen to her all the time. It is too much, he was agreeing with everything I said. And the more he did, the more uncomfortable I, I felt. Now maybe this guy actually lied about his girlfriend. Maybe he was kind of trying to create that mutual connection. Like, oh you like this, I like this. It might be a match made in heaven. Or trying to mirror her and so she feels like oh maybe he's the one maybe he's the one but i doubt that's actually working okay so right before the play started a woman around his age sat on my other side the moment she sat down he went quiet and oddly the woman struck up the same kind of small talk with me he even asked me similar questions almost as if they had compared notes as she talked she touched my arms a few times in this weird too familiar way just like the man had done earlier, I felt trapped between them. Thankfully, the play started and everyone went silent, but I could still feel their eyes on me watching me the time. At the intermission, the man offered to get me something from the concessions. I declined, but he kept insisting, I'll surprise you. He said his tone a little too eager. I kept saying no, but he seemed frustrated and eventually got up to leave. As soon as he was gone, the woman picked up right where she left off, asking me about singing because she thought my voice sounded pretty. I told her I used to sing in high school but had stopped. Again, she touched my arm while she talked more, more than once and made my skin crawl. Maybe she's just a lesbian who wants you. Anyways, when the man returned, he brought back some M&Ms and milk duds, both of which looked like they'd already been opened. He offered me the milk duds and I declined. He didn't eat them either, he just placed them on the floor like he wasn't sure what to do next. Then he started asking me more personal, personal questions about my family, whether I came to college alone. I lied, telling him I live with my brother in an apartment far from where I actually stayed. 
That's when he leaned in and told me that he was an amateur music producer that had a great voice. I should come by his place sometimes to record it. He just happened to live near where I said I lived. It was all too much of the tension in my chest wouldn't go away. Then his phone buzzed, he quickly looked at it trying to hide the screen but I saw the message. She's really cute. Do you think she'll work? My heart was racing. I wanted to bolt right there and then but I didn't know what to do. Okay, that is a bit creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Like maybe they, the two people in you know, who kind of blocked her out, the guy and the girl. Maybe they both were a couple interested in her for some weird shit. The woman beside me suddenly touched my arm again and whispered that she was going to the bathroom suggesting I come with her. At first I thought maybe she had noticed the man's odd behavior and was trying to help. But then I saw her phone light up with a message that read, Yes, it was from an unsaved number. I felt my stomach drop. She never went to the bathroom. We all just sat there for the second half of the play, dragged on tension thick in the air both of them kept glancing at me and i could feel my heart pounding in my chest the moment the play ended i got up and climbed over the woman making my way to the exit as fast as possible once outside i darted into the bathroom trying to collect myself but when i finally came out i saw the man and woman standing in the corner of the foyer having what looked like a heated whisper whispering argument when the woman spotted me she immediately stopped talking and the man began walking towards me. I can give you a ride to your apartment, he offered, and I told him not that my brother was picking me up. Just then, one of my classmates ran over calling me out, hey Susie, Susie, not my real name for privacy, but let's go with that. The man backed off when he saw my friend. We left together as we walked out. I heard him yell behind me, Susie, hope to see you again. I didn't look back, I just ran, staying on the phone with my mom the whole way home. Now I can't stop wondering why did they act like that they didn't know each other and when they when they clearly did when did the both when did they both ask me the same creepy questions touching my arm like they were trying to establish some weird familiarity and what was with the text were they communicating with each other about me the whole time where did the candy come from was it already open why didn't he eat it? eat it why do they keep acting like they're trying to separate me asking if i wanted to go, go to the bathroom or ride with them i'm a paranoid was something seriously wrong i had help making the story clearer but the experience is ac accurate and has happened to me also a girl had been abducted trafficked and murdered in my college town a year ago before i was there the whole situation makes me feel uneasy but this unfortunately guys does happen in real life and this shit is tends to happen quite often so at least not in ubc i hope not in ubc because that's the college i go to so, you know, that's crazy the shit happens and it definitely does sound like a true story. So, you know, we got to you you guys got to be careful. You don't talk to strangers. That's like rule number 1 in the parent playbook. Don't talk to strangers, you know. Let's see what the comments say for this. So, JF said that classmate was sent by a guardian angel not overreacting. I will report this to anyone who will listen. Professor, manager of the playhouse, campus security, police I totally agree, like I would just call campus security, I would, you know, hang out with the professor till campus security came, even the police came, I couldn't agree more. I told my theater professor about it, he said he would mention it to the people in charge. I have have been back to a few places since then, obviously never by myself, I haven't seen those people since. Damn, to report a suspected, you gotta contact XYZ, you guys can just save this for yourselves. That's probably the scariest thing I've read in the recent months. That they obviously had something going on and I think he narrowly escaped being drugged. I think I would report that to the police just in case someone else has the same experience. That is true and it's a good thing that she is, he or she is safe. And um, yeah, let's go on to story number two. Story number two is sleep paralysis or a Japanese ghost. So this one is a paranormal story so let's go ahead and check this one out. Hi everyone, I've never posted on Reddit before. But I am a long time loco and was inspired by spooky season to share one and only experience, possibly paranormal. I am also open to suggestions of different types of sleep paralysis. Okay, let's go to the story. In July of 2019, I, currently 26 female, had just turned 21, my sister 23 female, and I had booked a month long trip to Germany and Italy, and then finally the, the trip with 10 days in Japan. There was a heat wave that began in Europe and I travelled east to Japan. 
though it was hot as balls at the entire time lol. While we began our trip in Tokyo, we were able to see sightseeing during the day and partying by night for the next two days. I went out the night before we were supposed to leave for Kyoto and ended up only coming back to the hostel as my sister and friend were waking up to begin to getting ready to leave. Long story short, I was still tipsy and realized someone has stolen my JR pass. It is a bit stressful morning as I was uh, as I was fighting a brutal hangover and having to sort out another GR pass, which if you've been to Japan, you know how expensive they are. Well, rule number one, don't drink before you travel. Silly buffoon. Anyways, we eventually arrive at our Airbnb in Kyoto around 3. I wasn't really tired from being up all night as I didn't really feel greatly fatigued or affected from the lack of sleep within reason and my hangover was mostly gone. After all, we checked out the house and I decided to head upstairs my designated room for a nap before we head out for dinner by night. The room had two single beds and a window. Sunset wasn't for another two to three hours and the afternoon light was coming directly through my window so it was quite bright in the room. I didn't mind as I can fall asleep under any condition. I was laying down on my left side facing the wall with my eyes closed for what felt like 30 minutes. My eyes snapped open when I felt the pit, you know, wait, sorry, what? My eyes fell open when I felt the bed clip behind my shoulder, like someone had put their hand down to steady themselves. This was followed by the pillow my head was sleeping on, also dipping down, like someone had laid their head directly behind mine. All while this was happening, I was starting staring at the sunlit wall, too scared to breathe or move. I was fully able to t able to move through, move though, sorry I can't read right now, but was too scared to turn around because I definitely knew it wasn't my sister or friend as I didn't hear any of them coming up the stairs after what felt like an eternity but looking at, but looking back at it only probably 10 seconds. I took a rallying breath and turned around quickly, I was met with nothing but an empty sun drenched room, nothing was on the bed, no indents or the bed or pillow. I quickly got up spooked up and bolted for the stairs calling my sister and friend's name. They were downstairs playing the Nintendo 64 and were bewilderedly amused, amused by retelling of my event and they chalked up to my experiencing sleep paralysis. I'd never had sleep paralysis, paralysis before so I couldn't relate it. Sorry this is a super long post XYZ. Okay so I personally think right like, sorry, I messed up a couple of words and sorry before, but um, I personally think this is the effects of getting drunk the night before when you're traveling and you kind of, you not in a conscious state of mind. So I think this may be the paralysis. It's definitely not a Japanese ghost, for God's sake. So, um, yeah, I'm calling cap on this one. It's a strange story for sure, but um, I personally think, right, that this is definitely sleep paralysis effects of drinking before you travel because think about it you're in the east traveling all the way to japan you're tired you don't know what to do you just want to get some rest hungover in the morning so that's definitely analysis awesome and now guys for the last story we're going to be looking at camping incident next year and this one's said to be spooky and um yeah let's see if we are going to be with this but me and my best friend try go try to go camping once a year we have been doing this since we were 30 years old never really been truly scared or had anything weird happen until last year in the blue ridge mountains we showed up during peak season the first night and space was very limited we were losing light so we set up a camp on a spot on the side of the mountain there was an absolute wind tunnel morning came so we went into town drank beers and dicked around until late afternoon as it does by the time we got back up to the mountains to switch our camping spot we were losing light but managed to find more remote spots we get set up with our tents and fire going and start drinking again time goes by it's probably 1am when we see a flashlight aimed at us and then it starts walking our way we don't really think much of it, assume it like it's a park ranger coming to fuss about something because who else walks up on you in a remote part of the mountain at 1am? I don't know 
about you, but since I started camping, I leaned in kind of an unspoken rule that you don't walk up on someone camping that late in the night unless it's an emergency. Free. Anyways, this person gets close enough as we realize it's just some guy, early 50s, in a shirt and basketball shorts, and his girl, bodies, who is avoiding eye contact with us. The man immediately forces a conversation about nothing, doesn't acknowledge the time or, or his goal. His eyes are darting all over the place while we were talking about talking to him about dumb shit like what model or style lantern we had and how cool it was. He's saying weird stuff like how he used to be a former law enforcement, completely out of context of the random conversation he engaged us in when all of a sudden he pretends to land his flashlight on our tent and says, oh, that's where you guys are sleeping, huh? Cool setup. The way his eyes and fla his eyes and flashlight are moving gives us both the feeling that he's trying to see how many of us were there and what we had on us or near us because his eyes and flashlight kept scanning the ground around us. We were getting sized up for what I don't know. Once this guy sees everything around us, he kind of pauses for a minute, ends the conversation, and walks off into the woods. Once his flashlight disappears, me and my friend look at each other without seeing anything, looks at me and says, we're packing our shit and getting out of here, so we did. This was the most unsettling thing I have ever had happen while camping. I think this guy was waiting until we, you know, were asleep and come back. I just don't know for what. But I do know we weren't 100% getting sized up that night. Might not seem like much, but if you have, if you ever, ever had a moment with another human being who was sizing you up, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this, unfortunately, again, does seem like a true story. This shit happens again. Unfortunately, it is a bit eerie, like, what would the guy come back and do? Like, would he, you know, kill you guys? Would he rob you guys? Would he maybe, like, do other terrible things to you guys? So let's see what the comments say for this one. Always trust your gut. Couldn't agree more. That's horror, horror movie rule number one. Always trust your gut. Don't do the American horror movie method. That, that shit's gonna get you killed. So glad you left. He was definitely up to no good. Glad you both trusted your gut. Again, that tweaker motherfucker wanted to do something, but only the god but only the gods know exactly what. I'm glad you guys got out of there safely. So always trust your gut. Several years ago there was a young woman sailing through all the Great Lakes and blogging about very cool adventures. One night she was sleeping on a boat and a man who had been tracking a boat. Oh no. Oh my god, that's terrible. Holy shit. That's actually terrifying. But um Yeah, so you know. I personally think this one was definitely a scary, scary, scary look, scary story because this shit happens unfortunately in real life and you know, people just gotta trust their guts. Begin with like the lady in the first story, she trusted a gut and you know waited for some friend or someone to come and walk with her. Second story, he didn't trust the gut at all and maybe your friends are there and like kind of slap her around verbally. And the third story, again, trust your gut, pack up and leave. So um, yeah, hope you guys like this video. I know it's a bit of a dark season or a dark video, but this is a spooky season, so spooky videos are going to be coming. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like subs and subscribe. Uh, double double tie down out there. And um, yeah, may if you guys like this video, make sure to check out the next one. It's sim a pretty similar video, so uh, check it out. Definitely subscribe. Go watch that video right now. Yeah.